that your son Jesus who laid his life down, shedding his blood, yes. that we may be able to live yet to stay, Father. Yes. Father, we love you. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we give the praise. Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. amen.
God knows exactly how much we can do. And my grandmother's generation, they, they know how much you can handle. Amen. You are now in the hands of our pastor. Amen. 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 Let church say amen. amen. Uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, let me thank everyone that has made this possible, that got us ready to depart and gave your time and effort to move us in a timely manner because most of it just snuck up on us and we really never had a definite time nor date. So I want to thank especially Mr. Hughes uh, who coordinated it all. And he, he spearheaded and made sure that we get, was able to do what needed to be done and we basically are done. We're not finished. I didn't hear that. We're basically done, but we're not finished. Because there's still something, some more things that we have to do right after church. So we need some manpower to accomplish the rest of the move as it takes place. Amen? Amen. Also, don't forget first Sunday at regular time. I don't know. Just in case y'all ain't caught rumors that we didn't change the time or some 11 o'clock. We will adjourn to the, the place on South Bluff. And then also tomorrow uh, at 3 p.m. Well, anyway, so tomorrow... We'll be meeting the cleaning crew to come and finish cleaning up in here so that we can turn it over to the new church that is coming forth. Amen. 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 So that's basically it. Don't read the, the service times on your bulletin because that's the first time you probably read something. You're going to use that as an excuse. <laughs> I know y'all should. So, 11 o'clock next Sunday. Amen? Amen? Also, what I'm getting ready to do is not in your bulletin, but I am getting ready to do some, some uh, special things. And it's, it merits special things. And first of all, I want all of Miss Paul that came from Kansas to hear the stand. Amen. Amen. And this is a highly involved, because they didn't let me know, emotional day for those, some of them you had to take off work. But what happens is, when you get, we've been here, we've been here 32 years. Give it to me. I think I'm right. <laughs> and in 32 years, that's a generation Amen. that has come through. Amen. And with that, it's, it's fun and wonderful and memories, period. Yes. And it's a part of people's lives that the church has always been, used to be, it may not be today, but the church used to be a vital part of people's lives and help shape their lives. And when, when they, re, they remember the good and the bad of what they did with the church. This reminds me of when you get ready to go to leave the house and mama and daddy after a few years telling you that they gonna sell the house. And you go back home when you realize the room that you used to grow up in is no longer going to be there. The living room is no longer going to be where you used to be. And you now pondering home ain't home no more. But in this world and in this time, transition 
is always going to happen. God's church still wants to move on. And God wants to take it higher and higher to where he wants it to go. So if your mama and daddy is planning on downsizing to a condo, they just letting you know it ain't that you can't come home, but it ain't the home you thought it was going to be. I still can serve you pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, but it ain't where you grew up. Because one thing you also got to remember, you left and didn't come back home, which is okay, because that's what it's designed to be. Amen. So even though this is the last time gathering in this building, Miss Ma had a first time gathering in this building. But Greater Miss Hall existed before this building. And I pray that Greater Miss Hall exists after this building. So this is historical. I've been up all night trying to handle today. Because I've never done this. But it feels good. And first of all, the first thing I want to acknowledge is is, 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 she's not here, but the family is here. Amen. And I think, and they answered my prayers by being here. Because I pray that the Hicks family Amen. come and help us celebrate. <laughs> and Marva and Pastor Hicks was here long before all oh, y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but, so, so they was here. And so the Hicks family has been deeply rooted and deeply grounded into the church. Amen. And also, while I got, uh, I want all of the previous Miss Hall people or relatives to stand. Amen. 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 And she said, stand back up. She needs some pictures. Come on, come on. This ain't a normal worship service, so we are normal today. Now the first I, I'm saving something for last because he deserves it. So the first thing I want to do is open up for comments or condolences or however you feel that you can stand at this time and let us know how you feel and whatever you want to say because this was your home. So anybody that would like to say anything, we could, you know, like we do at the funerals, you got two minutes. <laughs> and I'm going to cut you off. And if you wish to say anything to the church or your feelings and your thoughts, Amen. Amen. Church home, and I never went anywhere else. And I'm 
in Vietnam. So, Brother Richardson, it's time for us to go. <laughs> it's good. The change is good. Amen. And we just keep Brother Miss Hall's name, keep moving. Thank you, Brother Miss, for marrying me and my husband. We're still together. <laughs>
trust that their trust as they trust us and as we trust God in Jesus' name. We have to continue to stand if God is for us, who can be against us? And every time I do something or read something or write something, my last word is forward. Amen. 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 Anyone else?
I love you for a cuss. We're going to move higher. Pastor Richardson, I love you too. We're going to do this big journey. Because God going to see us.
Before I bring up my friend, a person that had faith in me, I want to acknowledge one more person that's dear to me, and I know he's been dear to Greater Men's Paul Baptist Church. He's no longer with us, but I want his family to stand. Deacon Stevens. The Stevens, I, t- I talked to your mother last night, and I'm glad to see you, because she said that she was going to do her best for you guys to represent, and I thank you guys for coming and showing this support. This was, Mike would have been so proud. <laughs> of what we're doing, and thank God that even though it hadn't been a year, we still are moving on. I remember in July when all of this started to take place. And ever since then, my heart, my mind, my thoughts has always been with Mike. Because Mike is the one that brought me here. Amen. And I, I, I didn't even know he went to church. <laughs> and I used to freak out when he told me how long he'd been at Miss Park. And I used to look at him and go, we him. Was you at church? You was with me most of the time. I know I wasn't in church. But so, I guess for two hours on Sunday, he was sneaking away. But it was he, he brought me here, and God told me to stay here, and it's been a blessing ever since. Amen. 
And I want to thank the family for coming. He's always going to be a part of us. He's all in all, hold on, all of the past mishap will always be a part of us. Because we're going to make sure we take them with us where we go. We're not going to forget one soul that has been passed on to make all. We're not here if it wasn't for them. Don't think this is on you. This is you just continuing what they had with God. Amen. Now, I would like to bring forth when I met him, and you guys had already said it, but I get to say it. When I met him, Pastor Hicks has been a true inspiration. Pastor Hicks has been right with me throughout this whole journey. He's been a person that has always been encouraging. He's been a person that has always been so supportive. And I've always, and I'm indebted to him because he don't know why I am indebted to him. And the reason why I'm indebted to him is because he is the one that was willing to step out on faith and let me have this opportunity. Tragedy happened to him. And we prayed him through. And he's still with us today. Amen. I'm sad because the way Miss Paul came to me was not the way we had planned for Miss Paul to come to me. But I just want to thank him for being the great man that he's been and will always be. Because he's always had Miss Paul at the forefront of his life. And he's done a beautiful job of taking us on. So first of all, before I bring Pastor Hicks up, I would like for his beautiful first lady, Joyce Hicks, to not only stand, but come up here with her husband. If you hadn't heard, my beautiful sister is recovering from a car accident. And our prayers have always been with you, Joy. Greater Miss Paul, I want you to stand. I want you to give God and a Holy Ghost welcome to the former and still pastor emeritus of Greater Miss Paul Baptist Church. Such a wind, but that little house was. Remember that? We had a little house we was in when, when, when we became members. We left Progressive. We came to this little house, and it was about half as big as that fellowship hall out there. <laughs> and we had come from from a Progressive. I wonder how come we had to come over to this little big dinky church. <laughs> had about four or five folks up in there. I said, oh, man. I couldn't even flip out because I couldn't, they see it. Wherever you move, they see it. <laughs> there wasn't no side doors and all that stuff. You, you, when you got in there, it was hot in there. They had no heat, no air conditioning in there. You'd be sweating, carrying on with vegetables and up at the hot air. 
we come a mighty long way. A mighty long way. And, 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 and when I got through, when I left home from Memphis, I said I wasn't going to no more in life. I was done because I had gone to church enough to last me the rest of my life. And I can't believe that I came down here and took over this church. I, I said, my God, what have I done? And after I got here for a while, I figured I, had, I found out I had messed up. <laughs> Sometimes you get to some things that you can't shake the loose on. And this far is one of those things that I, I just can't shake the loose on. Uh, when, uh, when the pastor uh, came, Richardson came, I was so happy to see him. So I knew then that, that I would retire one day. And I wanted so badly to have somebody that I felt would be confident to take the legacy on forward. And, uh, and so when I got to Pastor Richardson, I, he, uh, he was the same as bright kind of guy. But I, I said, I said, but he's always trying to go. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm, I'm doing it. And I said, Well, why do you want? Why do you want to leave? Why, what's the matter? Well, you know, I'm trying to keep him to stay here. So when I got ready to leave, that I had somebody here to leave it too. <laughs> and I didn't want him to get away. Because I was a good person. I was a good teacher and pastor. So and, and finally, and finally, like the door. Oh uh, well, kind of. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not happy about it, but I had to. At Shakespeare, and, and I had to take a lead job, and Pastor took come step in, took right over, kept everything going in my absence. He didn't try to take my job while I was sick, and all that, you know. So uh, I, I thought I thought about that he's a good man. So when I knew I wasn't going to come back anymore, I told him down. I wanted him to have a church because so I thought he would be the best of church and church and church and You know why? Because I knew that he didn't mind rolling up the seeds every now and then and working. Amen. Because back in the day, he was trying to stay here, trying to hold on to the building, Amen. trying to keep the lights on, trying Amen. to keep the mortgage paid and all that. But Lord brought through that business in so many different ways. When we got the church paid for, I said, Lord, I said, now am I free now? <laughs> he didn't tell me that. I, said, I guess I'm still not free. <laughs> I see my name, my name still on the tag. I cry, girl. Baby, I say, they still got my sign there, so I, I, I guess he's still welcome. But I, I, I want to tell you, most of everybody in here, some of them was young girls, young women, when I saw them. Some of them was babies. Some of them got grown, they got babies. I'm a kid from here, but I, we didn't have so many people in our family buried in this church here. It's a short, it's, it's going to always be a part of us. And I told my mom to be here, but she don't do what I tell her to do anymore. <laughs> I told her to come on over here today, but she didn't show up. She said, well, I guess I'll be here. I said, okay, well, she ain't here, so it's on her. <laughs> but I thank God for the internet for the informing her as to what's going on over here. Well, some people get on that, on that uh, Facebook, they tell everything that's happening. And it's good for people like me. I find out where I need to know by looking at Facebook. So, in, in my family, in everybody's family. So, so I'm glad to be here today on this occasion. And I just want to say that I thank God for Pastor Richard that he's taking his legacy on. I thank God for the fact that he's doing what I, I what, was not able to do. Because my time was up, and I and, and I, I didn't get to do everything that I had in mind doing, but he's moving that moving that thing on forward. Because you know we all all got a a legacy. Uh, uh, my time is running out, uh, uh, but uh, but I want I want to leave y'all with one thing here, members of this church. Uh, there was a preacher had to push a wagon full of stuff up the hill. And he was he was he was, he was uh, up there just trying to get the wagon up a hill, and it, all of a sudden the wagon stopped moving up hill. He looked around, and said, "What was going wrong?" When he looked around, all the members had stopped pushing the wagon. He was pushing the wagon by himself. Now I want to tell y'all this day, 
Don't let that Pastor Richard be the only one pushing the wagon. Everybody stay behind the wagon. Help him push you up the hill. You got another hill to go? Keep on pushing. And turn around and say, keep on pushing. <laughs> Thank you, first lady. Come on. <laughs> Give an honor to God and to everyone that's here. I love you guys so much, and you, you know that. Uh, through the years, I appreciate you letting me have your children. Uh, the thing that I, I remember most is that we had like 45 to 50 children in the choir at one time. And, and I'm so proud that those children are successful. And I would like for all those children that was under Pastor Hicks to stand at this time, all of them, all the children that were children with Pastor Hicks. had and like I'm, I'm saying half of those children went to college and trade Amen. schools and became something of itself Amen. and I am so proud of that Amen. even even the uh, Debbie's grandbabies and you know I'm just so proud of all of your children so thank you for letting us borrow them and thank you for letting us be at this far and be part of the legacy and thank you Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let, me, let me clarify something because I get this thrown in my face all the time. And Pastor Hicks brought it out. He said that I kept trying to leave. No, you did. Well, I did. <laughs> And I'm glad that they finally said that to you. Because everybody, the, the rumors has always been, I took the church. I was trying to leave. <laughs> and I was, and, 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 and the beauty of it is, I just made you this to Joy's hug. <laughs> Joy's back here telling. Y'all don't get around the hitches. And they don't want, I don't want you to know the true story. But I do want to thank God that we did believe that God had a plan and God is now moving on. Yeah. Now, that everybody that I hope and pray, I know this is a memorial occasion and for those that have invested deeply into this church, because church requires sweat and blood and a lot of tears. Amen. And after nine years, I've been tearing. So I know I got a lot more crying to do. He said, God, God. <laughs> These two, I'm going to put them back in the view. <laughs> but it's been, we, we, we're now at the conclusion, if there is no one else, Ashley, uh, Octavia's daughters, Mike and them daughters, uh, little Mike, if there's no one else that wants to say anything, I just want to thank every, 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 every one of you. We are building off of what you have done. And unfortunately, we won't stay here to do it. But if you done heard the little words that was coming out of people's mouths, they started in a little greenhouse. And they kept on moving. And I thank God that we are no weird, that we don't have to stop moving. Because God has taken us to something else. And I, I, and I want to really thank Pastor Higgs for bringing that out. Because we used to spend a lot of time together. I am help fulfilling. We, when we met, one of the greatest things that we had in common was the shared vision for Miss Paul. And we are moving on with the shared vision 
have missed Paul. And I just thank God, my beautiful wife, that fell in love, and we thank God that we are able to move on. Now, in order to really move on, Kenny going to come get your money. We're going to worship God, and we're going to close this thing out. Amen? All right.
take the resources to keep us in the Father. Lord, we give back to you what you have to give to us. Father, we ask that you take it, multiply it, and Lord, send it where it needs to go. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory on today, Father. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray, and we say amen. 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 And it's kind of full, but it's kind of like, use the word, you know what I'm saying? Ready to follow the word, you know? Word of God. I want to acknowledge our student pastor, and he preached the gate sermon every Sunday. And I just thank God for those who have been to them in my life. I really. I'm really grateful to Reverend Heath and Pastor Richard. I can't say it enough about that, but I'm so individual in what I have today in my growth as a minister and a person. I thank God for you in my life and this part. Amen. Amen. So I have some great singing of our choir today for all you to hear this. Eat and everything you can do now. Sing the past. Amen.
done with his infamous wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Will allow things to happen. Yes, yes, he will. But sometimes you don't quite understand that first he has to let it get into your soul. Right. 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 Things, things, see, we we so impatient with God that God takes his time so it can get in your soul. Thank you. Then when it gets in your soul, it means something. See, we wouldn't have a day like this if it wasn't in your soul. Because if it wasn't in your soul, it would be just another day. Come on. You would go through the motions Come on. Come on. and you would try to remember when. But when it gets into your soul, it starts to mean something. I want to talk briefly to you about yesterday. Then I'm going to take a secular theme and use it. It says, it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know who sung it. Everybody, I knew y'all know it. You can count on the church to tell you who sung it. But to say goodbye is never a right way. There's never a way to do it where it means what you hope it means. Sometimes the most simplest thing about goodbye is just say goodbye. Because that way you don't have to absorb how to do it. One of the things that blessed me and I, I, I thank God for it, I didn't know this was going to come until Friday. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to dwell on it. Which is good. Because I heard you say what you found out, how it affected you. Well, it affected me the same way, but the only thing is when God keeps you busy, you only got a certain amount of time to reflect. When Paul helps us understand how to deal with yesterday, he don't say to get rid of it. He said he don't even say it don't exist. He just puts it in a proper perspective. Yes. All right. All right. In Philippians chapter 3, and it's on your bulletin, Paul letting us know what we need to do about our yesterday. All right. All right. Paul tells his brother, and I do not count myself to have apprehended. That means arrived. <coughs> But one thing I do, yes. forgetting those which are behind yes. Yes. and reaching toward those yes. Yes. which are ahead, I press the toward the mark. Yes. Yes. Now the new Bible say the goal. I don't like the goal. I like the mark. Yes. Yes. For the pride. And it says upward call, and I like higher call. Yes. Of Christ, God in Christ Jesus. When we look at what Paul is trying to tell us, and I want to be brief, because I just want to say goodbye. Paul is really saying to us, you rest in the security of yesterday. And yesterday is stuff you already done been through. And you see what God has brought you through. You saw the magnificent work that God can do. But we got to remember God is not just confined to a place. God is not confined just to a building. God says everything I do has a certain time and a certain purpose. Come on, come on. Greater Miss Paul Baptist Church today. We can reflect back on what God has done in this magnificent place. He has done great things. 
Even in my nine years, I didn't witness the magnificence of God. And while I'm on the sorry, and I've been meaning to do this since I got up, but I ain't done it yet. And I thought Pastor Hicks was going to do it, but he didn't do it yet. But I have to acknowledge his former chairman of the deacon, Deacon Tony, whose brother is now the chairman of the deacon. But when we look for yesterday, yesterday brings security. Yesterday gives us memories. Yesterday takes away our anxiety of what God may want us to do further on. Yesterday takes a remembering of the sins and the blunders of your life. But how you got through them all due to God's grace. Yesterday becomes a memory. And you are able to walk through certain things because you remember how good yesterday was. You know, one great thing about being a military child, we don't have time to really focus on yesterday. Because you move so much that the only way you're going starts to stay in your life. But then I have to look at those that have labored and have put forth roots in a place. And their lives have been engulfed and immersed into what yesterday means here today. We may be leaving an edifice, but we're not leaving the spirit of the Ephesus. We may be leaving a place, but we are taking with us 63 years that was built upon that God has blessed us with. See, just because we can, it's a physical thing, God's grace is going to be with you wherever you go. That's why when you look at Isaiah 52 and 12, it says, You shall not go with haste, for the Lord your God will go before you, and the God of Israel will also be your rear. So what you saw yesterday is going to be the same God for today. And where we go in the future, God is going to be there guiding us through I had the great privilege of watching a transition from Pastor Hicks to me. But I watched Pastor Hicks labor to get this place ready for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday can keep us in yesterday. Yes. Yesterday can give you security of yesterday. But the thing that you cannot let yesterday do it stop you from moving to today. What you can't let yesterday do is shut you down where you can't see tomorrow. You can't let your security of yesterday stop you from a future that can bring forth excitement and joy and the wails of God and the challenges that grow you to trust God. Because you want to rest on what you did Yesterday, or oh, we're going to take a whole new look at things. And God is reminding us that I protected you in the past. I'll protect you in the future. God is letting you know that I'm going to grow you more and more spiritually so that uh, you can have a future. God is letting us know yesterday through Pastor Rice and Pastor Hicks is bringing us to tomorrow. So that it be when I pass the keys on, somebody else will be ready to take over. Because yesterday brings forth today. And today brings forth tomorrow. And you got to understand that God created you to grow, not stay the same. Pain. Suffering. Disappointments, discouragement, despair, late nights of wondering, early morning rises of prayer, loss of loved ones, wondering when, and hoping to get through. All of that is 
yesterday. And when you got through them, you rest in the security of yesterday. But today, we must go without hate. When Pastor Rice came to this building, they came without hate. They didn't know what was going to happen, but they knew God was with them. Now it's our turn to go without hate. Is it going to be a picnic? We may have one or two, but it's still going to have its pains and turmoil because Satan don't want to see you do. Today, your security is going to have to rest in the power of God because he's calling you to a greater and higher calling in your life. He said you've been faithful with a few things. Now I'm ready to rise you up to something even greater that was beyond your imagination. You say, why me? Because he said, why not you? Because I'm ready to transform you into something that you never thought you could be. You saw yesterday. Now look at today and see my glory in your life. Most people don't take these kind of steps. They're secure in yesterday. You see, if your job offered you a new position, you'll be willing to take the new position because you are prepared for that new position. But you never think that Jesus had got you prepared to move to today. So we got to let the past rest in the past. And we got to embrace the sweetness of Jesus. And we got to hold on to his unchanging hand. Because the future is what Jesus done said. I don't know what all we going to encounter when we get there. But I do know that we can overcome whatever we encounter. I don't know what change is going to take place. But I'm ready for the changes to take place. When I listen to the testimony of how this building has been transformed, that gives me enough faith in God to know that the next building can be transformed. Because it's not about the bricks and the stones and the mortar. It's about the spirit of God's people going forth saying that we shall do what the Father said and we shall march on to what God has called us to do. Brother well, Mitzvah well, started 63 years ago and God done gave it a future. God done gave it hope and God done said keep on, keep it on. Don't worry about yesterday, just today. It's a new day. Many families have come through. Even Pastor Hicks and his family. We done watch them lose some special people. I have even lost a special one in this church. And we brought him on through. But now is new legacies. Now is new hope. Now is a new future. You, my beautiful brothers and sisters, forgive me for not looking back. Don't think it's not in my soul because it's deeply rooted in my soul. But I can't look back because I see a future with God. I can't look back because I see the hope of God. I can't look back because God is ready to touch some names that I don't even know their names. God is ready to touch a community that I don't even know who's over there. God is ready to take us into a new height, into a new glory, and be able to touch some different people. God is ready to stretch us out from city to city and move us into what God wants to
us to do. Let's not get shy. Let's not get ashamed. Let's not be scared. Let's move in the glory of God. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But the Lord will go before us. We don't know how tomorrow's going to rise. But the Lord is going to go before us. We don't know what the prize really is. But we do know that God has a prize for us. See, Paul said that I move toward the mark of the higher calling of the prize. And he says, I'm not looking back no more. I'm not looking right now. He says, I'm pressing I'm moving, I'm struggling, and like Pastor Hicks say, I'm pulling the wagon toward the higher call. I know that when I get on block, there's going to be a higher calling, and I got to keep on going because I know God has called me to move on. So tomorrow, go have some new failures. Tomorrow is going to have some new pain. Tomorrow is going to bring some new tears. Tomorrow is going to bring a different sweat. Tomorrow is going to grow a different heart. Tomorrow is going to touch a different mind. Tomorrow is going to bring forth a new soul. Tomorrow is going to bring forth greater faith. But one thing I can say, and I want you to say, tomorrow is going to be a new day. And God has stayed moving me. When I say me, that's your name too. God is saying, keep on pressing. Keep on moving. Keep on walking. Keep on talking. You got to press on to the work of a higher calling. You haven't got there yet. Paul said, I know I haven't arrived, but I'm going to keep on moving on. We may close the door in this church, but we're going to move to another church. And God is saying, keep on going. So there's going to be a higher call. There's going to be greater blessings. And there's going to be a newness about us. I don't know about you, it's hard to say goodbye. And the reason why it's hard to say goodbye is because I'm scared of what might happen over there. I'm not no different than anybody else. I'm apprehensive about what's over there. But I do know one thing. Whatever the battle is, I know one thing. Whatever my delight is here, I do know one thing. That if I pray, Jesus, I know. I'm going to be victorious. Yes. Pastor Hicks, I've been singing. Yes. Yes. Greater Miss Paul, you done seen it. Sometimes you didn't know if the lights was going to stay on. Sometimes you don't know if the gas was going to be on. Sometimes. You didn't know if the water bill could stay on. Sometimes you just didn't know what you needed to know. But one thing that you can say, I thank God for yesterday. Because the lights are still on. The gas is still on. The water is still on. And if I got it on yesterday, God will get it on tomorrow. Be a struggle, but it's gonna be a good struggle. Just praise be to God.
fear not. Because the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know how to say it. Thank you, Lord. But I'm going to say it the only way I know how to say it. When I was in the military, they used to have going away parties and PCS parties when you knew that was your last day and they would all want to come and say goodbye. After about two or three of them, you couldn't take too much more because your heart would hurt. The tears would come. So you would learn to sneak out before they got there because you would have told them goodbye two days ago. You know, sometimes it's just to leave it where it is. You, can, you know, you can say goodbye too much and hurt people and put them in yesterday because all they remember is all the goodbye. Miss Paul, we ain't going to say goodbye. We just going to close the door. We're going to turn off the light. And in the midst of all of that, we're going to commune one more time together. And next Sunday, we're going to look into the newness and we're going to look into the future. And the thing that I love is this. You're old enough to know if you done been through life, the cell phones done changed. The cars done changed. Anything physical done changed. But the building is physical. It's going to change. Amen. 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 Come on, Jesus. We're going to do communion. We're going to turn off the lights. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. And we're going to hug somebody. Because this is good life. And we're going to show the love of God. Amen. Amen. Everybody got the instructions, because I don't feel like crying right now. <laughs>